Hello. Hello and welcome to uh, Angel Cafe. My name is Aoife Gaffney. I am a certified money coach, a hypnotherapist, divorce coach, and lots and lots of other things. If you can, give me a thumbs up so if you can hear me and see me correctly. <clears throat> so today is... <coughs> The theme is spiritual millions of the Angel Cafe. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Ashling High. Fantastic. So you can see and hear me. I'm going to talk today a little bit about the spiritual side of things, the and the energy of money, but also give you some practical tips. And I'm going to leave at five minutes at the end for questions. Um, and I'll post any links that I mention uh, in this video at the end. Um, and also some links to the Tree Sisters charity. So before we start, I'm going to draw a card from this beautiful deck by um, Sonia Choquette. I was privileged enough to meet Sonia when she was in Dublin a couple of years ago. Uh, so let me draw a card and see what hops out at me for this morning. Right, my card this morning is Psychic Awareness. So that's really nice. Um, so I sort of I'll bear that in mind as we go through this morning's presentation. One of the the biggest blocks to abundance that we have, and I say we as women have, is a lack of self worth, and sometimes it's just this lack of belief in ourselves. Are you thinking big enough? What kind of language are you using with yourself when you talk about money? Um, so I'm an NLP, hello, hello, we just good to see those hellos there, so at least you, you know I'm not um, just talking to myself, I'm talking to this square on my computer. Um, and, and if I am, by the way, if you do see me talking to myself, I am self-employed and I'm just having a staff meeting. Haha, uh -huh, I stole that joke from somebody else. Anyway, thinking big, that the difference between a millionaire and a billionaire is that she writes her goals down every day. So what is your money goal for the day, the week, the month, the quarter? It doesn't really matter. Pick a goal, whatever it is, that seems reasonable, that you can achieve, and then double it. Go mad if you really want, triple it. And write it down. And the more you write it down, the more you normalize it for yourself. So let's take a pro athlete, for example. Um, this is a fantastic Irish athlete at the moment, breaking incredible world records. Um, and she visualizes herself. So she has gone through those races over and over and over and over again in her head. She has seen herself cross the finish line. She has seen what she's going to do, how she's going to train. And it's exactly the same principle with money. If you feel you're at um, an income ceiling, so you just, I cannot seem to get past this particular income amount per month per year whatever it is that's you've just created this unconscious block for lots of different reasons so write down whatever it is the goal you would like to achieve not you think that you can achieve the one that would really absolutely scare the living daylights out of you write it down every day on the top of a page we just had the tech queen onto a sleppy notebook write it down at the top of a page that then be, so it, it, you what you're doing is you're normalizing that figure for your subconscious mind when you speak about money, speak about money respectfully and use the correct currency for your zone. Uh, Irish people, we tend to use this kind of, oh, it's this many yo-yos or, or whatever. Just use the word. Um, use euro. If you're writing money down, if you're writing down 1,000 euro, write down 1,000 euro, not 1K. Write it with the euro symbol. Use the euro word. So whatever the currency is for your country start speaking of money very respectfully if you are if you're speaking about money and, and you speak about euro then and you use euro then use euro don't use any other word like um yo-yos dollars a few whatever but people almost it's a, it, it, like a sense of shame that we have talking about money so the price is i will pay you this is what i charge this is what i would like it's however many euro, full stop, the end, that's it. So that's my first step is to start writing down the amounts of money that make you feel a little bit uncomfortable. And when you speak about money, speak about money respectfully. 
So money is only really money when it's moving. If money is sitting in my wallet or in my bank account or whatever it, whatever it is sitting, all it's doing is sitting there. It's a piece of paper or a piece of metal. So money does need to move. So receive with gratitude. Thanks very much, however much it is. Again, the amounts don't really matter. However money comes into your life, receive it with gratitude. And when you spend it, whether you are spending it to purchase something or you are giving it in a sense of tithing, like the Tree Sisters, give with gratitude. So you, when you give, you create something. And when you receive, you create something because money is a means of exchange. Um, so if I have a thing and you have a thing and we swap things, we still each only have one thing. But if I have energy like an idea or money and you have an energy because money is energy and we, we create this exchange, suddenly we both have something bigger than when, before we started out. So we could, money is a means of exchange and it's a means of exchanging money and energy to create something bigger. So start writing stuff down. When you write things down with a pen on a piece of paper, it creates a very powerful link with the subconscious mind. So make sure you're using a really, really, really nice pen. Um, this is my, I like bees. I like things with bees on them. Um, so there's a bee pen. Um, I have a purple pen somewhere else as well. So just make sure that the pens I have, I hoofed out all the free ones that I didn't like, that, you know, pinched from hotels and banks and things, just booted them all out or give them to charities. So when I'm writing down these numbers, because when I'm writing about money, I want to write very respectfully. And I'll use a nice notebook in a color that I like. The cost of the one in the color you like and the one in the color that you don't like is generally nothing. Um, my next tip is to give every euro a job. So however money, however a method that money comes into your life, whether you find it on the ground as a coin, uh, you it comes into your bank account, it comes in through Revolut or PayPal, um, somebody sticks it in an envelope and hands it to you, it doesn't really matter how it comes into your life, it needs a job. So it needs purpose. Remember, money is only money when it is moving and when it has a specific purpose. You can use the jam jar method, which is okay, this much money is for groceries, this much money is for utilities, this much money is for, and a really important jar, envelope, category, Revolut Vault, whatever it is you want to use, um, two of these jars are very, very important. One is the fun money, that's the money for me, and the other is your tithing jar. Again, because the more I have, the more I can give, and the more I give, the more I can have. So it's very important that this energy of money is coming from a place of giving and receiving. And put a value on your time. I have a very high value on my time because I am worth it. And if you invest with me and you work with me, I will charge you for that time but also I will save you more than it costs you to work with me. And I had this conversation with my accountant recently because um, the accountant put their, their fees up. I thought, this, my accountant is worth it. My accountant saves me time, money, mental energy, and mental anguish and stress. Um, and I've been working with the same person for a long time. So my accountant saves me more money then I pay them. So I pay that bill with joy. I genuinely do um, because it makes my life so much easier. So be prepared to invest in things that actually make your life easier. And so in, gen in general, raise your vibrational energy. So write down your money goals every day and the top of every page and also it's very important to start closing that gap so a lot of people um that's very general statement often we use this when then game when i when i get around to it i will i will clean my car when i lose this weight i will go on that holiday when i i will but what if that when at some point that when needs to happen, otherwise you're never going to do the thing that you keep putting off. <clears throat> if you say, okay, in six months time, I want to have this much money. 
then in one month's time, that gap has closed to five months. When you write down at the top of your page every day, this only takes about a minute. By the way, my, my money management takes me five minutes a day, maybe six minutes if I haven't had any coffee, but five minutes a day. <coughs> write down your money goal at the top of your page. And then as the day goes on, deduct anything that has come in to decrease that goal. So let's say I write down 5,000 euro at the top of my page, and that could be maybe for that month. The amount of time, by the way, is that's up to you. Uh, and and then I uh, secure a paying client and they pay me however much, depending on the package that they have chosen. I find a coin on the ground um, and something else. So at the end of the day, that 5,000 euro that I started out with at my target is maybe down to, let's say, three and a half thousand. So fantastic. Uh, and so it's a very important to acknowledge that these gaps are closing, that you are closing the gaps to your goals. What I also do is I, I will use a lot of money goals as anchors. So there's some post-its and things stashed all over the house um, and in various different places. There's one on the visor in my car. I have one under my pillow. There's one... Um, uh, actually directly in front of me if, if I raise my uh, if I raise my gaze and look at the the wall in front of me I have a money goal there and all of the money goals are the same because when I did this first it just wasn't working so this anchoring business is just is just not working it's not working for me and I realized that I had these very conflicting amounts I had written things down okay like at, at, you know at this point a 2,000 euro a month would have made me pass out so I had that written down somewhere and then somewhere else I had written down 5,000 euro per month and then I said I'll, I'll go a bit mad and I wanted to push myself into the six-figure bracket so in order to do that I had to exceed 8,333 euro 33 cent per month to exceed the six-figure bracket so I had that written down somewhere else so while the amounts don't really matter, what mattered in the reason that manifesting strategy was not working was because the messages that I was sending out were so confusing. It's like going into um, going into a, a, an Italian restaurant and saying, well, I'm not really quite sure what I want. And I think I'd like a little bit of Chinese and then maybe a little bit of Japanese. And, you know, I really quite like some Indian stuff, but I'm, I'm, I'm in an Italian restaurant. It's, it's, it's very confusing. So the clearer your goals are to yourself, to your subconscious mind, to the universe, whatever it is, whatever energy you want to to talk about. Um, you know, the card I drew at the beginning was psychic connection. <clears throat> it's really just making sure that everything is in alignment. And the fastest way to achieve a goal that you have set for yourself is to run in a straight line towards it. And I know that might sound overly simplistic, but sometimes it is about, okay, that's it. I have the blinkers on. I'm going to tune out anything like, oh, a shiny thing over here or another shiny thing over here, or here is something else, hooray, for me to procrastinate about or for me to be distracted about. So this is my money goal, whatever it is, because your goals are unique to you and personal to you. And I am going to run in a straight line towards it. So everywhere I turn, it's going to be anchored into my passwords and in, in whatever shape or form makes sense to you in a secure way. Um, it could be a pop-up on your phone. It could be a post-it. Um, you could record yourself in your own voice because our own voice is more, is, is more powerful to us than somebody else's voice. You can record it in the form of a question, which is based on the work of Noah St. John, who talks a lot about affirmations instead of an affirmation, which is a statement that sometimes you can sort of argue with. But an affirmation is a question. How come I always achieve my monthly money goals with ease, flow and joy? So you've asked yourself a question and then your brain will do everything in its power to find the answer. Uh, so, a very quick summary. Write down whatever it is your money goal is and write it down daily. If it's daily money goal, write it down daily. If it's a monthly goal, uh, still write it down daily, but sort of identify at the top of your page, this is my money, uh, my monthly money goal, my weekly money goal. Write it down. Ideally, twice a day, first thing in the morning and then last thing in the evening, or look at it or, or meditate or all of the above doesn't really matter you can't overdo it 
<clears throat> make sure that your goals are all in alignment. So if you have 5,000 euro on one piece of paper and then 10,000 euro on another piece of paper, it's not really going to make a lot of sense. And start closing those gaps. So acknowledge and recognize money that comes in. Say, fantastic, I have now just shaved this much money off my goal. Hooray, I now only need to achieve this much. So it's very important to recognize and acknowledge the, the money and the abundance that comes into your life. When money comes into your life in whatever shape or form it comes into your life, give it a job. So allocated to a particular uh, category, heading, whatever it is you want to call it. You might just start out with two broad categories, essential and non-essential. And what goes into those two headings is up to you. Uh, you might like to be a bit more detail oriented, um, like food, uh, clothing, groceries, uh, business expenses. You might I like to get a bit more creative instead of food because that just sounds sort of dull i'll say healthy food to allow me to nourish my body that's a very long-winded way of saying groceries so it's very important that and um, that you also speak very respectfully about and too many so if you are quoting somebody a price for something that's the price you simply state it own it there is no apology for i charge this much how much is it to work with you it is and then sell a tape your mouth shut if you have to um but there's no sort of justification well you know we and you well i could discount and because i know you and we could and i know it's kind of expensive and just whatever the price is think like a car salesman this is the price that's it full stop the end whatever your price is <coughs> use the correct terminology so if you use euro sterling uh, dollars whatever it is you say my my price is this many euro sterling or dollars whatever it is and when you're writing money whether it's writing it down handwriting or, or um, emailing somebody or, or writing in any shape or form try and avoid the abbreviation so use the correct um, monetary symbol if you can figure it out on your keyboard, I keep losing the euro symbol on my keyboard. Um, use the the decimal point, the comma, the the right words. No abbreviations, no K. No, so like one thousand is one comma zero 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 point zero zero in in whatever currency. And that's very important that you show money that you have a healthy and respectful relationship with it. I just see a comment coming in there. Find it hard to say what I charge without some sort of justification. Absolutely. Um, I have been in that space. Again, apologies for the, the sort of the coughing and the you know, not long, not long uh, over that dreaded pesky virus that we're not going to talk about. Um, I, I was that person, um, Alwyn had just brought up, a, a, you know, she finds it difficult to justify whatever it is she's charging. So I would practice. Again, the more you practice, the more polished you get at whatever it is that, that you want to do. So if you want to be wealthy, you need to study wealth. If you want to be successful in business, you need to study successful business. If you want to get better at ma making Facebook videos, you need to study how other people do them and not do them the way I do them. If you want to learn, if you want to do your hair properly, you need to study how to do it. So if you want to learn how to do something, you need to study and you need to practice. So Alwyn, practice in in front of the mirror, practice in the car, practice with your dog, your cat, your child, your friend. Practice simply stating your price. So okay, how much is it to work with you? And Alwyn replies, my fee is... Uh, for this or for this package it is and stop talking and that's sometimes the hardest part and always start with your highest pricing first ideally have multiple offers because different people you know, they might like a little bit of try before I buy um, so ideally have three offers so and the, the lowest one could be a free thing giveaway 
uh, or it could be your sort of seven to nine dollar pricing and then you have your mid pricing and then you, you usually have something a little higher depending on what it is that you do sometimes people don't and you say my price for this this is my price my fee however way you want to phrase it and then stop talking get comfortable with silence so brian tracy if you know brian tracy he's an expert in does a lot of sales training and he has some really really powerful closing techniques this is silence is probably one of the most powerful closing techniques because we hate silence so when he was training salespeople, they would say okay my gazingas pin this 20 gazingas pins is this much and the salesperson would stop talking and he said the, the perspiration would be nearly rolling off them and the next person to speak loses now it's not a it's not a manipulation technique it's simply getting comfortable being uncomfortable stating your price and if you really 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 struggle to uh, talk about your pricing invent an assistant who does this for you and create an email address for Bob or Bill or Mary or John or whatever who works who is your assistant uh, team Alwyn so team Alwyn will reply to the client and say um, this is the so it's almost like it is easier to um, it is often easier to talk about somebody else's business, to promote somebody else's business. So you can invent another person who talks about you in the third person, which is how Prudence Moneypenny came about. Because I, I really, really struggled with self-confidence and I struggled with my own sense of expertise and I struggled enormously with my own pricing. And so I created this persona, Prudence Moneypenny, who always has amazing hair, she never loses her keys, she never shouts at her kids, she was all of the things that I wasn't. And then I would step into her. I think Beyonce has such a fierce. So I would step into her and I say, okay, how would Prue phrase this? How would she price this? She would say, my price is, if you want to work with me, that's fine. And if you don't, that's also fine. So you are not a good fit for everybody, which is perfectly fine. Uh, so practice whether you practice in the car, practice in the shower, when you're out going for a walk, you could even record yourself in your own voice, uh, quoting your prices so that your subconscious mind is hearing that over and over on repeat and on loop and also get comfortable increasing your prices. Like it's okay to increase your prices for whatever reason, either your expertise, you um, you have gained another skill, another talent, uh, you are absorbing uh, additional costs, maybe even delivery costs and things have gone up. So if you're product based, you may like to increase your prices. Um, if you have you, if you're adding value, okay, my price is. Uh, but your your next level up, so you know, I really do need to increase my pricing. Increasing your pricing doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do extra work. You could have additional products that you add in, you have already created, and you add those in as added value. So I have a lot of free meditations on Insight Timer. Um, and then I have some other ones that I uh, that you need to pay for. And I will often add those in. So I'll add the paid ones because the free ones are available to everybody. I'll add in some of the paid um, meditations and I'll add those in because I've recorded them already. They're sitting on my, sitting in my Google Drive, which is, is where I keep things. Um, so Christine says difficult. Christine, what is difficult? So maybe you can, if there's other questions, by the way, I will come back to them at the end of this video. If, there, if you do have a question and I don't get around to answering it in the live, if you post the question afterwards, I will get around to it. Um, so I have things that I have already created. I have, you know, a chapter from one of my books or maybe a full PDF of one of my books. Uh, meditations that I have recorded that are not in the public domain. Uh, I've got workbooks and all sorts of bits and pieces that I can then add into a coaching package to add value. The work has already been done, but the client is getting more value than simply working with me one-to-one, -one, which is very powerful. 
um, but sometimes they want to do something, you know, like, you know the, the idea of this kind of extra bonus is, is quite a feel good thing or maybe like a little bit of pay it forward. And sometimes even with clients, um, the added bonus is that I make a donation to a charity of their choice. So that was a way actually that allowed me to increase my fee. Uh, and let's say I increase my fee by a hundred euro, then I would donate a portion of that to a charity of the client's choosing. So that sort of sat better with me. Oh, Christine says increasing my prices feels uh, difficult with existing clients. That That's a tricky one. Um, and it sometimes it can be a very, very simple. If you're halfway through a package with somebody, then you can't move the goalposts, you know, unless you're um, a mobile phone company because they move the goalposts all the time. And that's just me. So if you are halfway through a coaching package with somebody, so depending on what type of business you have, if it's a kind of people pay for that one service or one product, you can say from next month or in the, uh, from the beginning of, my prices are going up by an amount or a percentage. Uh, and you don't have to justify it. You can, if you want to, maybe due to increased costs or due to whatever, or um, my prices are going up because, well, you simply just make a statement from this date, give people notice, from this date, my prices are going up by that's it, full stop, the end. Sell it, tape your mouth closed um, and stop talking. So that sometimes is easier to do by email because then you don't have an opportunity to overthink it and to start making just kind of ridiculous reasons as to why your pricing should go up. So a book I highly recommend is called Nice Girls Don't Get the Corner Office. And she talks about women ask and men assume. So men will make a statement so I am, I am going to play golf at three o'clock on Friday afternoon and they're just gone. Um, men often, um, they will look at a job specification and there's gonna be 10 criteria and they meet two of them and they go, ah, no problem at all. Like I've got, I've got that in the bag. Whereas women will kind of, oh God, I need to leave at three o'clock on Friday and they sort of make these ridiculously long winded excuses. I have to, and you know how, if it's all right with you and could I just possibly as a just get to the point. Um, or they look at it, the same job specification and go, but well, I only meet 9.9% .9 or 9.9 um, points on that list. I'd better wait until I, I do that last PhD, get win that last Nobel Prize before I apply for that job. So nice girls don't, don't get the corner office. It's a very humorous take on the um, unconscious mistakes that women make predominantly in the office sort of but in the workplace but you can apply a lot of the principles to yourself and as to you know the reasons that we unconsciously keep ourselves small and maybe struggle to increase our pricing or charge our worth um so about two minutes for questions if there are any questions so just stick them in the chat so write down your money goals make sure they are in alignment uh, so try and avoid having kind of mixed messages because then you're the university subconscious mind, whatever it is, has no idea what it is that you're trying to achieve. The difference between a millionaire and a billionaire is that she writes down her goals twice a day. So writing things down with a pen on a piece of paper is incredibly powerful and often underestimated. Uh, you're very welcome, Alwyn. Um, and I'll put some links in the video uh, once I figure out how to do that. <coughs> when money comes into your life in whatever shape or form it comes into your life you say thank you very much that's wonderful thank you universe more please something along those lines so receive with gratitude pay for things with gratitude because money is only money when it's moving and the minute money comes into your life give it a job if even if that job is to spend it the next minute you're still tracking it when it comes in so you're tracking it closing that gap to your goal and then giving it a purpose and purpose of the job. How do you suggest writing it? I sometimes at the top of the page, I'll just write down a number uh, and it'll be with the, the Euro symbol. So because if you don't use the monetary symbols, it's just a number. So it could be a, it could be a telephone number. It could be a postcode. It could be an anything. So that's why it's very important when you talk about money and write about money, that you use the correct terminology so that your brain understands what it is that you're talking about. If I say a thousand, that could be anything. Is it a, a thousand watt? 
a thousand um, bicycles? Is it a thousand euros? So it's very important to use the right symbols, uh, the correct words, and to speak about money, speak about and with and to money respectfully. Uh, Sinead, I'm glad you like it. So um, every day I write down a, um, at the moment it's a monthly goal, and I write down then the amount of money I earned that day. So that gap, so I'm, I am kind of acknowledging that that gap is closing. And we are now at one o'clock on the button. So I'm going to drop off and hand you over to the next speaker, who is Rachel Burns. And if there are questions, please just um, pop them in the chat below and I will answer them over the coming days. And it's just been so lovely to be here. And don't forget to make your donation to Three Sisters.